Welcome back everyone to another brand new video today. As requested a lot in my comments over the last few videos, I'm gonna be doing a very simple yet effective strategy on how I would structure a Google Ads account on a very low $50 a day budget. So if I was starting from scratch or I suddenly had only $50 a day to spend for my business on Google Ads, this is what I would do to create the most profitable structure within a Google Ads account. I'm gonna be sharing each step and each campaign type I would use. As I always mention, if you'd rather a team of experts take over your Google Ads and manage and scale them for you, check out my Google Ads agency in the link down below. Now, like I say in all of my videos, the very first thing I would do is get my Google conversion tracking set up. This is quite complicated in some cases. Some cases there are apps and things on Shopify that do it for you, but it never really truly works 100%. So just to be sure, and like I have shared in previous videos, I'll leave a link to my Fiverr developer in the description below. Extremely good value for money. He will install Google conversion tracking for you on any platform such as Shopify and WooCommerce. You'll make sure it's 100% correct so you won't face any further issues down the line and to ensure as many conversions are being tracked as possible because without any conversion data in your ad account, then Google is not going to know what is working and you won't be able to scale at all in your ad account. So that is number one most important thing you guys need to be doing. Next up is going to be brand search campaign. Obviously, this is an incredibly low budget campaign and if you're starting out just on £50 a day, I would allocate no more than £5 or five dollars a day to this so a maximum of 10 percent of your daily budget would go on this brand search campaign now just to show you how important these sort of campaigns are i'm on one of my businesses here if we do last 30 days you can see i've only spent 946 pound a day and even on my business my daily budget on this is only 30 pound a day some days it won't even spend that but you can see last 30 days it spent 946 pound it has gotten me 42 tracked conversions with a 4.7 roas some months the roas can be closer to 10 I mean, if we do all time here, you can see the ROAS is 10.6. So it just goes to show that it's not only incredibly important to have one of these campaigns on, but it really will enhance and grow your Google ad account as a whole, because the more conversions you're feeding into your account, then the better the performance will be over time. Yes, people that search your brand and then click the ad may have purchased anyway, but why not get that conversion on your ad account? Because it only is a positive thing to do so. And the obvious reason, as you scale and your brand becomes more well, known if you're not bidding on your own brand name and getting that traffic trust me your competition will come in and try and steal that traffic from you so do bear that in mind now if you want a full build strategy of the brand search campaign in my previous video i did that exactly but just to briefly summarize a brand search campaign is a search campaign on google and the only keywords you're using are related to your brand name i always use gymshark as an example so you'd have keywords such as gymshark gymshark reviews gymshark shipping time gymshark discount code return policy all those things related to the brand are the keywords you want to use and you want to make sure it is exact match keywords not broad or phrase match you want exact match because you're going after that incredibly specific targeted traffic of people who are obviously searching your brand name so like I said no more than 10% of your budget you can even go in at 5% it just depends on exactly how much budget you're working with but obviously in this particular case we're using $50 a day as the example now for the major portion of my budget I've put this down at $35 a day so 30 35 plus the five for brand search will leave us with $10 extra at the end, which I'll explain what I'll do with. But $35 a day, I would start by launching a standard shopping campaign. I personally wouldn't go near performance max unless you've got at least $100 or even $200 a day to play with. And standard shopping just gives you that extra element of control, which PMAX simply doesn't offer. So I'd essentially make sure your entire product catalog is synced correctly to Google Merchant Center. You've categorized all your products correctly. You've given Google Merchant Center enough information information about your product, such as the color, the size, the gender, extra keywords in the title and description on Merchant Center, just to give your products that best chance of reaching not only the most people, but the most people in an accurate way. Now, the way I would structure this, I'd put all of these products into one standard shopping campaign. I wouldn't necessarily worry about splitting them into separate ad groups. That is because we're going to be using the manual CPC bid strategy. And even though everything is in the same ad group, you can still set bids on the product level. Level. So there's no need really to split them out into separate ad groups unless you really want to and have sort of a variety of collections. I still would only just use at one ad group and that's exactly what I've done on my account here. I use this at the moment for testing new products because if I put a new product straight into a performance max campaign that already has a target ROAS, it just doesn't get any clicks or impressions. So using this method, you're giving every product at least a fair chance to spend and hopefully get conversions. Now, like I said here, this is going to be a manual CPC campaign. So the most 
most important thing you want to be paying attention to at the start is going to be the bids you're setting for each product now it will look something like this when you click your ad group it will bring you to product groups and you can see for example I have a variety of excluded products and this basically means these products have spent X amount of money for me usually a hundred to two hundred pounds of ad spend if they've not had a conversion I'll simply exclude them from the campaign because that's Google telling me okay they're not really going to perform if they've spent a hundred or two hundred pound with no conversions sometime in the future I bring them back into the campaign with new images or titles or price points but just to begin with I let them spend anywhere from 100 to 200 pounds like I said no conversions I simply exclude because that will just give other products a better chance of getting spend as well now what it looks like here you can see a product's either going to be excluded or it's going to have a bid amount here next to the product ID now this is going to be the bid amount that you're going to set for each product and you might be wondering okay what am I supposed to be setting this bid at different niches have different CPC averages relatively I say with clients I see as well most e-commerce stores you are looking at anywhere from sort of 50p slash cents to two pound or two dollars per click but if you are just starting out you're going to be focusing on the low end anyway so we're going to use camping gear as an example let's do a foldable camping stool or chair let's just see what this comes up with so let's say you're selling this particular product you would search this on Google's keyword planner tool just make sure you've got the correct country selected here at the top you want to make sure this is correct because each country is going to have a completely different CPC for each keyword now the two columns you want to be focusing on are the low range and high range bids and to simply put it low range bid means I would say poorer quality traffic and higher quality traffic is going to be more towards this end now if you set your bid for example at £1.12 that doesn't mean you're going to get a conversion every five clicks for example but on the other hand if you're going to set it really low you're going to get more traffic and you may think that's going to lead to a higher chance of getting a sale that's not always the case for example three four years ago when I first started using Google Ads on one of my businesses I set my bids on these manual campaigns literally one or two P above what this low range bid is now that worked really well for me but you know over the last couple of years that hasn't really worked so I've now started to go in a bit higher yes I'm going to be paying more per click but I'm going to be getting slightly better quality traffic so let's say this example here and I've got a camping stall that I'm trying to set a max cost per click at or a manual cost per click should I say if I'm giving these numbers here I would personally go in and probably start my bid at around 50p slash 50 cents it's still less than halfway between the two but you're just slightly above the lower end and like I said it's going to hopefully bring some slightly better quality traffic than the cheapest traffic that Google is offering and then you just want to make sure you go down and do that on every single product here now one thing you can do as well on standard shopping is set a max CPC you can see up here for the ad group now this doesn't really matter as long as you set this above every other max CPC you put on the product level so you can see for me it's £1.50 that basically means no product in here is going to have a manual bid set higher than this because if it was the other way around and you had a product bid in £2 but your ad group max CPC was £1.50 there's going to be conflict there just make sure this is higher than everything the product level and just briefly before we move on to the last campaign type I would use moving forward once you've made the standard shopping campaign like I said I start to make changes by excluding products if they've spent 100 to 200 pounds with no conversions if you have products that spend this amount and get profitable conversions hopefully by that point you can afford to scale your budget or you can start to move some of these products out into their own campaigns whether that's their own single product standard shopping campaign or as you do truly scale you'll find yourself having single product performance max campaigns but I've made a few videos entirely on Pmax but we're not going to worry about that today as this is a low budget strategy now with the final ten dollars a day i would make a search campaign now again like brand search you're going to need search terms to put as your keywords in this i would avoid using your brand name in this cold search campaign if you like because you want to be attracting traffic that don't already know your brand exists so you want to be putting in keywords that are related to your products using the camping store as an example again you put a variety of keywords related to that in your search campaign and then start to build out ads related to that product and direct this cold traffic to I would recommend a product page at this stage now if you're wondering about what keyword match type to use I just use broad match now on my cold search campaigns in all types of campaigns Google is just leaning towards you know more automation broader matches basically options and settings that give us less control but that simply means Google knows what they're doing so don't feel like you're giving Google too much control there is a reason for that and this is just an example of one of my search campaigns here uh, it's lifetime performance you can see now obviously I'm using a target ROAS bid strategy that's because I've got historic conversion data obviously for the account if you're going in fresh with a search campaign again I would either use maximize clicks or manual CPC again obviously you can see 
I'm using the T rise bid strategy. Now, if you're just starting out and got no conversion data, you won't be able to use target ROAS on any campaign. So for search, I would just use a maximized clicks bid strategy. And these are the sort of results this has brought me a 2.6 ROAS when, you know, if you're a historic viewer, you'll know that's very profitable for this particular business. Yes, shopping is very powerful and arguably the most powerful source of traffic for e-commerce businesses, but people still by habit click on search campaigns. By having this at a smaller budget, you're still giving yourself a chance to capture the traffic that don't click shopping ads, but click search ads as well. Now, the reason I've not dived in to make these sort of campaigns in this video, because literally my last video is going down and breaking down exactly how I make and structure these campaigns. So definitely check that out. This is how I would structure a Google ads account on a $50 a day budget, simply brand search campaign, shopping and search. And I guess one point that I can't stress enough is don't start making changes to your campaigns every single day. Launch them, leave them for at least seven to 14 days and then gradually make small tweaks here and there. You don't wanna be changing your bids every other day or every day, it just it just isn't gonna work. You need to give Google time to learn and optimize, otherwise you simply won't see results. But other than that, that has been it for me this video. If you are new around here, make sure to subscribe and I'll see you in my next video.